Google. It's a big wide world of data and it's very easy to drain yourself in search results. So what about learning the language that investigators, researchers and experts use when they're looking for something, like trying to find that needle in a haystack? Well, there's a language out there and it's called Google Advanced Search. I've heard some refer to it as Google Dorking or even sometimes Google Hacking, but I reassure you that as much as it might sometimes look like it, it's not hacking, it's merely clever searching for public information. The only thing is, sometimes that information shouldn't be public. And over the next few minutes, we're gonna look at my three favorite Google advanced search terms, as well as some of the other common ones. But I must warn that some of this might look like breaches of privacy and things like that. So please remember that you can actually cause harm by amplifying this information when you find it. And in certain cases, it might be more responsible to inform the affected individual or organization. Hi everyone and welcome back to this series on how to do open source investigations from home. I'm Ben and this is part 19, so let's get started. Let's take a look at some of the basic advanced search terms that are already available. There's lots of interesting sites that you can look at for this sort of information. One site that really does this to the extent is the Google Hacking Database or the Exploit Database. And you can merely get to this just by searching for the Google Hacking Database. You can see that this is constantly updated with different versions of how content is accessed. And you can click on this and just have a look at the Google search term itself. Sadly, this can actually be used for nefarious content the reason why I show this stuff is so that you can actually make sure that you are aware of how this content is working so that perhaps you can also keep yourself protected as well as learn how to search a little bit better on Google. So let's have a look at a few simple ones. For example, a lot of people know about using quotation marks. Something I've been working on a lot is Sudan and recently there's been a number of destroyed airplanes within Khartoum Airport. Perhaps I want to know a little bit more about Khartoum Airport. So I could have a look at Khartoum Airport Planes. So I can see some information there, but I also have 4 million search results. What if I wanted to have a look at, say for example, put in quotation marks, planes in Khartoum Airport. You can see that just by doing that, I've really re limited down my results to five results. I've also done a spelling mistake there as well. What I can also do is perhaps Khartoum airport and planes. Now if I did that, I've got 4 million. If I put in something like or planes, of course I'm going to open that up because it gives me content about Khartoum airport or planes, not the two of them combined if I actually did and. Okay, so that's a little bit useful. Maybe we can get on to some of the other interesting ones. The first of the three advanced search terms we're going to use is file type. File type is a really useful one because it allows you to search for things such as PDFs or videos or other things like that. If I was to search for PDF documents, you can see that I have a lot of search results. But if I was to type in file type PDF and then use a search such as, for example, Sudan, which I do a lot of work on, then you can see that already, wow, I have 21.8 million results. And these are all PDFs. I could do a little bit more and say um, Sudan West Darfur. There we are, 251,000 results or PDFs. Now that's a really cool one to use, but what other things can we look at? What other file types? Well, for example, we could have a look at, I do a lot of work with mapping, so we could have a look at file type KMZ, which is a type of file that you can open up in Google Earth or other mapping platforms and to list a set of coordinates or a set of pins. We can do file type uh, KML which is similar to a KMZ and there seems to be some KMLs available there. We actually have a few of them, 306 results. And this would allow me to download KMLs and open them up in Google Earth or QGIS or other mapping platforms as well. And you can see that there's links to those ones. For example, one from NASA. 
One of the really good benefits of knowing these sort of techniques is that you can also run searches for yourself if you're trying to keep yourself safe and secure online, right? So say for example, I wanted to go have a look at myself and where I appear in different PDF documents. So I'm going to go Benjamin Strick file type PDF. And what we can see here is that there's a number of PDFs that pop up. I've got 367 results. Whereas if I search for my name on its own, there's probably a lot more. And that's useful because we can actually look at how, where we've been referenced or other things like that. I could probably even search for my Twitter name to see if there are other results where that's been in a PDF. Um, and we can see that there's a couple uh, in there already. For example, a tweet that I've done linking to that in there. What we can also do is look for file types like mp4s. So say we go back to looking at Sedan, file type mp4. And you can see here that this will bring up a lot of sites that host video data. For example, we can see that Daily Motion is one. If we go through, there's probably some other examples in there as well. So one of the other things that we can also look at is around CSVs or spreadsheets, so collections of data. We can do that by typing in file type and let's have a look, for example, at XLS, which would be a spreadsheet. And I'll go back to my Sedan example for that one. We can see that this has come up with XLS files. There's quite a few in there. And you can also get XLSX as well, which seems to be more common and more of those too. We could even go back to the original example, Khartoum International Airport. And we can see that there's even uh, XLS documents, uh, files or CSVs of those as well. We could have a look at Sedan Gold Mining file type XLS, 2000 results, mineral industry of Sudan, and perhaps we could even look for a KML or KMZ. Uh, so we have a KML of global distribution of selected mines, mentioning Sudan in there as well with gold mines and other resources. And this is quite useful considering some of the recent research on gold mining activity uh, within Sudan. Moving on to the next example, we're now going to look at site searches. So this would be site, and for example, we could have a look at bbc.co.uk. This is really useful because if we, for example, type in BBC Sudan, or even go a little bit further and type in BBC West Darfur, okay, sure, we get 1.9, almost 2 million results. If we did site bbc.co.uk and then did West Darfur, we get 28,200 results. And that's because some of these aren't even BBC ones. They're Reuters, they're Wikipedia, Sudan Tribune, Twitter, The Guardian, and others. What site does is it allows us to filter down to the exact website that we want to look for information from. So here I've gone bbc.uk, I only want results from BBC and then West Darfur as well. So if you think about how that works, there's a few other interesting examples we could come up with. For example, we don't just have to filter down to BBC, we can also go down to site.co.uk and West Darfur, which means we get results from TripAdvisor, Guardian, but you see they all end with .co.uk. That's because this is a top level domain for the country, .co.uk. So we could put in .ru for Russia, West Darfur, and we can see that we have more than 104,000 results. We could even do other terms, for example, .cn, which would be Chinese websites, press briefing on remote violence in West Darfur, these are all Chinese websites, and we can even find Chinese embassy content there. So because we've been able to find that, here we are, sudanchinaembassy.gov.cn, we could take that site, and we can run a search on all the content that's from the Chinese embassy in Sudan that we have there. And we could even combine as we did before and perhaps look at file type PDF. And now we've got PDF documents from the Chinese embassy in Sudan. And maybe some of those would be interesting. Don't forget, we have the Google Translate plugin that we have here. So we can always have a look at what those are. So we have the Chinese visa example, statement on COVID. Um, but also a reminder for going abroad, 
and business docs here. I would recommend that if you're viewing some of these smaller sites that you use a VPN, especially if you're coming from countries where your activity may be monitored as well. In having a further look at site searches, thinking about what we were looking at before, obviously sometimes it's quite nice to find, for example, maps. So we were looking at Sudan before, and one of the things I always like to look for is Google My Maps. So Google My Maps is pretty cool. For those of you that don't know Google My Maps, it's essentially a, uh, a way to create maps using Google. So we can go Google, uh, the domain would be maps.google.com. We can even search for that, maps.google.com, very helpful. We could go site, maps.google.com, Sudan. Now we've got Google My Maps with maps made on Google by individuals with mentions of Sudan. This is really useful. So Sudan clashes Google My Maps. This was from 2015. Stop arms sales to Sudan made in China. This is one made in 2015 apparently as well. We could even open up some of these. You can see that there's a lot of data there that could be popped into a map, which is quite handy. Great, and that's just a really cool way to search for, say, map content using that advanced search, which we wouldn't have been able to do had we have just searched for the words normally using the normal Google search functions. And another way we could also look at that is by, for example, having a look at content from Twitter. So this was one that I saw mentioned from someone called Dutch Osync Guy on Twitter, where you can have a look at text from Twitter. So say we wanted to go uh, and have a look at the text of a tweet. So here is a statement put out uh, by someone. So what if we took that quote and we did a search for that? So what we could do is we go the text of the tweet minus or minus site twitter.com. We can see that that text, that exact text shows up a lot. Uh, we've got t.co, so if we really wanted to filter that out, we could also do minus t.co. But you can see that we've got the other sites. Now, if we did that without the minus site twitter.com, we get Twitter results as well. So it's a nice way to look for that. And it's also a nice way to look for if uh, any content has been quoted or attributed to someone, but we can't find the source of it. It's really uh, handy to kind of look for that content. So thanks, Bill. Moving on to the third one, which is things in titles. So the main one that we have is in URL. And this is a really good one to go through just to have a look at individual sites. So say for example, MI6. Hey, we've got a lot of different examples. Even we've got the Daily Mail, the Independent, politics.co.uk and obviously Wikipedia and obviously MI6. That's really useful. So what if we wanted to have a look at all the results but minus this one here. So we could go minus site. So now we're combining other results um, minus Let's just go mi6.co.uk. And then I wanna go site, bringing in the last one that we did before, CN. So now we can have a look at Chinese domain sites that have mi6 within the URL. Uh, we can probably get rid of this one since that's irrelevant now. We can also go even site.ru, which means domain Russia. We can go in URL. Gov. So now we have gov.u.ru, uh, which is Russian government, and they have MI6 within the uh, URL there. And that's a really useful one to use, especially if you're looking at specific countries and you want to look at, say, government departments of countries. Other things we can also go through, and this kind of brings up some of the privacy issues, is around webcams. For example, we looked at this before the same kind of in searches, but this time in title. So if we wanted to look for in title, say we went BBC. In title means that it's in the top 
of a page. We have BBC Studios and it's in the title of the page, right? One of the things we could look for is, for example, camera, live image in title. I want to look for that like this. So we have camera live image up in there. And there obviously seems to be a lot of open cameras on the right that we can see there. But we can go a little bit further than that. Um, one thing we could do is go back to our in URL. We know that there are webcam XP5, so a really not a very good one. So we could even go webcam um, and we could go something like XP5. So this opens us up to being able to identify webcams. I would remain caution on this. You don't know what you're about to see, so we won't go through some of these. What we're also able to look at, for example, is in URL, and you can do quotation marks, guest image dot HTML. This will show us, say for example, uh, guest image ones and so we're able to view this cafe that's live. Another one that we could try is for example we could go in title as we learned before webcam and we want to look for live webcams so we have earth webcam network, webcam hopper, things like that. We also want to go site.ru so now we're able to see tourist cams and geo cams of here's a marina that's through youtube that's also through youtube um, and we're able to see uh, some of these live streams and we can see the dates up there as well we have a live movable webcam we have other places you can see the ski locations and things like that as well. So those are just a few of the ways that we can use the Google search function or the Google search tool, which is such a simple tool that people use every single day to do a few more advanced searches and really narrow down some of those results to help you find what you're looking for or help you find the proverbial needle in the haystack. I hope you found this session useful in looking at my three favorite Google Advanced Search functions. And if you have any more little tips and tricks for Google Advanced Search, please leave them in the comment section below. All of the links shown and all of the search functions shown will be in the description below and you can follow along doing the same that I've done on the screen here. See you in the next session.